Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at the Empire Faucet's single handle pull down spout kitchen faucet for your RV. Now this is going to be available in this nice matte black finish and also a brushed nickel as well. Now most campers don't have a dishwasher and that's where this comes into play whether you're updating your kitchen with something new or replacing a broken one this can be a great option because with pull down spout you're able to actually get to those dishes and get in the crevices to really clean those out now something else that's nice is you have a option for a stream or a spray pattern so having that spray pattern is really going to knock down that food in the dish helping clean it up and whenever you're done you can simply retract this back and it goes back to being a normal faucet now the single handle has a very nice feel to it. It's kind of weighted in the right way and it's easy to go to either hot or cold and it feels great just operating it in general. Now this long gooseneck is really nice for filling up glasses um, but also it just kind of gives you a little bit more working room with your hands. It's also able to swivel 360 degrees so you can kind of get wherever you need to. Now our old faucet has seen better days and this one is made out of plastic and it's got just kind of a metal coating on the outside but it, it does feel a little bit cheap and also our aerator has gone missing. Now that's something that's worth noting here is the aerator on here is actually going to be nice for putting a little bit of air in that water as it sprays and that's going to help suds things up and just clean better overall. And something else that's nice about this is it's stainless steel construction. So you're not gonna have to worry about any rust uh, long term, it's gonna be rust free and it feels good also. Having that stainless gives it a little more heavy feel and it just feels a little bit more robust. Now, speaking of durable, there's also maintenance free diamond ceramic cartridges. So it's gonna be maintenance free for the life of the sink and it's also just going to have less friction. So it's gonna feel great overall anytime you operate the sink. Now, original faucet was a three hole and what's nice is this actually includes this deck plate here so even though it's a single hole it's going to cover up your old ones and it also has a nice foam on the bottom side so when you tighten it down it's going to compress it now i do recommend before tightening down you can put a little bit of plumber's caulk here um, and that's just going to make sure that this stays waterproof and you're not going to have water running down if water was to build up here now speaking of the install we're going to show you how to get this installed in your camper right now to remove your existing faucet the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you shut off the water supply to the actual camper now from there you're going to want to open your valves up just to make sure there's any excess water is going to come out now i do recommend once we start unplugging some of the lines underneath that you're going to want to have a bucket or some way to catch some of that water as there's always a little bit of residual there but let's get started so to get this unhooked it's going to be pretty simple it's going to be hard to see but a lot of this you'll be doing by feel so you're going to find your water lines and just follow those and you're going to find this little threaded connection piece here now pretty easily just with my thumbs i'm able to loosen these up and you shouldn't need any actual hand tools sometimes these can be on they're pretty tight but you don't want to put too much pressure on them as they can crack either the actual fitting or the actual threaded piece so just use your thumbs and kind of work at it and they should come off pretty simple now something else you're going to want to do is sometimes lines are not designated as far as letting you know which one's hot or cold ours is going to be a little bit easier to tell because we have two different lengths but sometimes campers can be a little bit different and they may not be denoted as hot or cold. So I suggest making a mark if you need to, that way you're hooking up to the proper line. So now you're gonna reach up just a little bit higher and you're gonna feel the threaded, threaded spout there or the hookup and up top there's gonna to be these keeper nuts. And same thing just with your thumb. You should be able to loosen those up pretty easily. There's gonna be one on the other side as well. So now at this point, this should come off and sometimes there can be actual caulk under here. So you may have to pry, take a putty knife and kind of work your way on this, but it should come out pretty simple. And this little deck plate should also come along with it. Now, while you have your old faucet off, it's a good time to go back and kind of clean some of the buildup that might've 
kind of over time kind of just left marks and also that's going to be better when you put your new one on there's not going to be any marks there that could might stick out past the actual fascia or the plate of the sink itself so using just soap and a rag or maybe some alcohol or whatever you may have to kind of clean this up is a good time to do it now here we have our new Empire faucet and we're going to have to take this collar off as this is going to go underneath the sink and actually clamp this kind of into place for us. So what we're going to need to do is get our washer here and our retainer clip off. Now it is pretty tight here. You can see all of this is meant to go through there, but they do bunch up quite a bit. So what I found is loosen it up to where it's kind of free moving here. And all of these have connections here, and this is where it really gets tight. And they are staggered to make it a little bit easier, but again, even just trying to get this first one out is tricky. So to avoid that, this line, our weighted line that's gonna kinda connect into this, we can actually go ahead and remove this weight, and that's gonna allow this one to slip through, and that's gonna gain us a whole hose of access. So in order to do that, you're gonna have some Phillips head screws, and go ahead and remove that. Now you can, there's an indentation on the hose kind of where this is setting just from being clamped down. But if you want, you can mark this, uh, but you can really adjust this once it's underneath your sink, no big deal. And also to get this through the retaining clip, this will need to be removed regardless because this was actually catching on the clip. So once this is off, Now, I should be able to slide this through. And you may need to find the middle ground between two lines like that. And once through, it's gonna really open that up for us to get the rest of them out one by one. You're gonna wanna get this washer off as well. So we're gonna do the same thing. Now we do have a three hole here and this is obviously a single. So we're gonna to want to use our deck plate here. So we can go ahead and feed these through. We may have to do the same method, but we might be able to, there we go. So we got all those through. So now we can take all of these and drop them in our center hole here. Now, if the hole size that is on your sink is binding up just because it is tight again, use that same method where we have this quick connect one out, feed all these in, and then we can simply run this in after. So now we're gonna go underneath and we're gonna be feeding these through. So make sure you have your washer first, and then we're gonna do our retaining nut here. So same thing, we may have to put that long hose through last, but we'll get this all on. And then once we get this threaded onto the shank, you're gonna simply just tighten this down. And it might help to have your screws in just a little bit, have it flush, that way that they don't come out as you're tightening it. Um, but we're gonna be using that to kind of rotate this to tighten it up. And then once it's tightened up, we'll be going back and tighten these. That way it's gonna cinch it all together. Now that we have our collar tightened down by hand, we're gonna go here with our Phillips and get these tightened down as well. And that's just gonna take up any extra slack and really get this pressed down to where that fixture is not gonna move. So now we're going to take our hot and attach it to our hot line. This is gonna be the same thread pitch as before, so a simple hand twist should get this tightened up. Go ahead and do that for our cold line as well. Now this little guy is gonna be a quick connect here. You're gonna see when you push it in, it should just kind of lock into place there with a little bit of tension. We may need to pull our clip out here. There we go. That nice audible click means that that is attached. I'm gonna give it a quick tug just to make sure. Now, something that's important is this is gonna be sliding up and down when you pull that spout. So what I've done in previous 
plumbing installations, I've actually gone ahead and taken these lines and kind of zip tie them out of the way. That way this isn't, isn't hanging up because you'll feel that rubbing against this when you pull that spout down. Now we still have our weight, so let's go ahead and grab that. To get our weight installed, if you're not using the previous mark and you kind of want to just custom tune it to your cabinet space, what I actually do, I pull it down all the way. What we'll do is this point here, this is going to be that weight to where it's fully extended here. You want to make sure that it's actually going to fully retract back. So if I put the weight here, it still has slack. So we need to find that bottom point. So it looks with it retracted back up. We're gonna sit right about here. So let's go ahead, we'll attach it and see how it works. So with the weight, you wanna make sure that it's gonna be on the edge that is actually pulling up. That way it always has that weight to kind of pull it back down and it's not gonna bottom out. But you also wanna make sure you still have that full range of motion and it's not gonna bind you up top either. So now you can go ahead and turn the water back on to the RV. Now before opening the faucet, you're gonna want to make sure that that pressure builds up and see if there's any water coming out of our quick connects or our threaded lines that we've tightened up. And if there is a little bit of leaking, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that is seated properly. So you may have to shut the water off, purge it out and redo those fittings, but it's a lot better than having water drip down. So once that's set, you're ready to use your faucet. And that was a look and installation of the Empire Faucet single handle RV kitchen faucet with a pull down spout in matte black and brushed nickel.